What causes some groups to be more diverse than others? Perhaps there are some traits of species that tend to promote diversification. Take our friends here discussing what drives diversification in birds. One thinks that yellow birds have speciated more than blue birds. You can see yellow more clearly, so that causes them to speciate more. They can see each other. What? That's a ridiculous argument. But maybe yellow is easier for predators to see. No. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm okay. Blue wins. The other thinks that being blue promotes diversification. Blue is more successful. They each have a hypothesis, but how can they test it? Yellow! Oh, so let's track it. Surely there must be a better way of sorting this out. And there is. You should try using diversity. Basically, your question is whether or not blue species or yellow species speciate more rapidly than one another. One way of getting at this is with the BISI method, of binary state, speciation and extinction. This is a likelihood method, so it tries to compute the probability of, a, of your data, the tree and the character states, under a model where speciation rates vary with that trait. So you have a blue rate of speciation and a yellow rate of speciation. And extinction rates vary in the same way, and the trait itself evolves under a simple Markov model. So how do you do this? Right, first thing you need is a trick, phylogeny. Ooh, like this? No, see that tree is not ultrametric. The branches aren't in units of time. Oh, this? Perfect. As an ultrametric tree, the branches line up at the present. Good, now what? Next thing you need is your trait information. That one's yellow. Hold on a second, I've got to fix this. I, I've got to erase this species. Well, what do you think you're doing? Erasing this species. Why are you doing that? Well, I don't know its trait. Oh, just leave it in. It's important when we know a species is there to leave it there. If you take it out, it'd look like extinction. We'll just mark it up so that we don't know what trait it is and that any trait would be consistent with the data. Just leave it? That's right, just leave it. Okay. So we're ready to make busy now? That's right, we're ready to make the likelihood function using the make.busy function. Okay, yeah. so I'll put all this data into make.busy. That's right, both the tree and the trait data. Okay. So now I can put my fossil in? Ah, oh, sorry, I'm afraid that currently the analyses can only use extant taxa. No fossils yet, I'm afraid. Mm, all right. So we're ready to put our data in the likelihood in diversity? Uh, just one thing first, are all the species in your tree, that is everything descended from the root node, is that included in your phylogeny? Most of it, there's about three quarters here. What about the other quarter? Are they randomly sampled with respect to the phylogeny? Uh, sure. All right, well, we can model that. If they are, we can model that random sampling and correct the likelihood for the missing taxa. Let's go ahead and pop that in there. Okay, now we're ready. Let's try. Right, now with your likelihood equation made, it's time to run some analysis. Right. In the versus tree, the analyses are separated, so that first you make your likelihood function, and then you do something with it. The two broadest classes of things one can do with it is to do a maximum likelihood inference, where we find the most likely set of parameters, or a Bayesian inference using MCMC, where we sample from the posterior distribution of the model and characterize the uncertainty that way. What sort of analysis do you want to do? Maximum likelihood. MC, MC. Right, well, let's just start with ML first. Busy has six dimensions. Let's have a look at the likelihood surface. Oh dear. Sorry, six dimensions is a bit hard to visualize. Let's just have a look at two. Oh, 
With ML inference, we basically take that likelihood function we made, and we try to find a set of parameters that maximizes the likelihood. So we take this hill here, and we just climb to the top of it. It looks easy when you can see the whole hill, but in multiple dimensions, it can be a bit challenging. Once we've found the maximum likelihood point here, we can compare this with constrained models and do likelihood ratio tests to work out whether or not our hypotheses about the trait and its role in speciation are true or not. But I don't just want to compare two models. I want to know the entire probability distribution of my parameters. In that case, you probably want to do an MCMC. With an MCMC, we basically try to draw samples from our distribution. Over time, as the sampler works, we're going to get a good picture of our posterior probability distribution. We'll be able to use that to look at how the parameters vary. Is the blue speciation rate consistently higher than the yellow speciation rate, or vice versa? So what's the answer? Yeah, what's the answer? Right, as you can see, the speciation rate of yellow species is higher than that of blue species. Oh yeah! Or rather, oh, yellow is associated with higher rates of speciation than blue. Hmm. You know what? I think this whole analysis is wrong. We shouldn't be looking at yellow versus blue, we should be looking at hair, hairy eyebrows. Well, we could, we could incorporate that. We could add hairy eyebrows into the analysis so that we have all combinations of color and eyebrow length. Then we could use MUSI, or multi-state speciation and extinction, to try and tease out the relative associations of eyebrow length and color in the analysis. Hmm. But what if we want to do height, or weight, or something like that? Running speed? Well, quantitative traits you could do using qu quasi, or quantitative state speciation and extinction. This takes quite a bit longer than the other states, and you can only use one, st uh, one trait at, one at a time. Cool, how do I learn how to do those? Well, you could look at the manual. In particular, the manual has a worked example of exactly that analysis, body size and primates. Oh, okay. I like primates. In all seriousness, Diversitry is an R package that includes a number of comparative phylogenetic methods, mostly focused around detecting the effect of traits on speciation and extinction rates. Included are the busy, MUSI, and quasi methods that we've been talking about today. Also included are some simpler methods for just looking at the effect, just looking at trait evolution or just looking at diversification rate. There are also some included variants that relax assumptions allowing time-dependent speciation, extinction, or trait evolution, or allowing for different models of trait evolution. If you've enjoyed this video or found the ideas interesting, I encourage you to check out the Diversity website where you can download the program and a tutorial that, that runs through a number of examples. Are you still talking? Oh, sorry. Thank you for watching. Diversity may be the spice of life, and if so, life is something like a curry. Very spicy or very diverse. Where's that going? One must always remember that these analyses are correlative only and can never prove causation. There could be other characters you have not considered that could be driving your results. Alternatively, your data could be a poor fit for the model and mislead your results. This last one is tricky as there is no way of testing this yet. Well that just about does her. Reps are all up. In any case, I think that worked out pretty well for our friends. Blue ended up being wrong, but I think she'll be okay. Blue seems to have a lot of ideas to test for the future. Perhaps you do too.